Bad AAA games are seemingly becoming more and more common, the most popular of the bunch being Cyber. But come on, everybody knows about that one at this point. Literally, the Polish government invested $7 million into that game. And that's why the Polish government failed, kids. Battlefield 2042 came out. That's gotta be good, right? Right? Totally no technical issues. Absolutely zero glitches. No rubber bending or lag. Very polished gameplay. Amazing physics! But ba Battlefield is a good game series. I don't understand. Oh, wait. Ah, ah, okay, that makes sense. Okay, I think that we can all agree that at release, Battlefield 2042 is an objectively bad game. <laughs> Well, actually, I disagree. Look, if you know anything about my channel, which, according to YouTube statistics, only 10% of the viewers- Stop self-promoting! I like video games, but as you read from the title, bigger budget doesn't equal better game, unless I change the title. But what do I mean by that? This surely isn't just a video that promotes smaller developer indie games and trash on mainstream games, right? Well, it is. Mostly. A little bit. Look, I don't feel like getting into why Battlefield 2042 is a bad game. So here's a list of why it is. Truthfully, I haven't even played it yet, but like, can you blame me? I'm not buying that sh I'd rather put my hard-earned money towards something that's worth it. Like this mug plastered with Kanye's tweets. <laughs> Look, this one says, Kim doesn't understand what a blessing I am to her. Well, that didn't age well. What's really upsetting is that fans really want their favorite game series to be good. So when an unfinished game comes out, it hurts the fans not only because of the disappointment, but it's like you guys announce, oh, don't worry, we're going to fix the game. Fans shouldn't just have to wait and hope for the game to get fixed. Just don't release garbage. What's the thing that Miyamoto said? A rush game is forever bad, but the delayed game can actually not be garbage. Just stop being so money hungry, EA. Okay, so I am biased for typically liking either indie games or Nintendo games more than the generic AAA games, but I do have a reason to be at least a little more biased now. I made a video about how indie game characters are way cooler because basically they have way more personality than like other video game characters like Mario. Like not gonna lie, Mario's kind of basic. <laughs> basically I talked about Demon Turf, an indie game that's really good and the main character Beebs is really cool because she's full of attitude and personality. What made that video even cooler is that the developer of Demon Turf actually saw that and tweeted out my video which was an honor because his game is really cool and I thought that was it. Ever since my return to YouTube my videos have been a bit lackluster in performance. My most viewed video is still an Overwatch fan animation I made five years ago. It taunts me to this day. But then, hear me out guys, I got a DM from Matthew Taylor. Who the hell is that? I figured you'd ask that. Well, you see, Demon Turf by Fabraz, the creator of the game, is partnered with Platonic Friends, a subsidiary of Platonic Games, which you may know as the developers of Ukulele. Now, Platonic Friends works with a company called Renaissance PR, a video game's promotional agency that builds connections between content creators and media. And one of the content creator specialists at Renaissance PR is none other than Matthew Taylor. It all makes sense now. Sure, I may be a pawn in Platonic Friends' plan, to make Demon Turf a viral hit, but I will gladly assist because Demon Turf is actually a really good game. And I'm being genuine when I say that. It's been a blast so far. And the reason I brought up the DM is because I actually was lucky enough to get a review copy of the game. And I'm not just saying it's good because I got a review copy. It's not like I'm getting anything from you buying the game for yourself. Now, if I did get commissioned, I'd be like, hey, listen here, you have to buy this game right now. It is a life changing experience and worth every penny. <laughs> buy the game. No. The reason I love indie games is because the vision isn't driven by monetary goals. Indie games are driven by passion and a creative idea that even though the creator may get little in return, it's the fulfillment they get that's the real achievement. Indie games continue to break the barrier of what was thought to be possible and continue to be awesome. It's like comparing real, genuine artistic creations to NFTs. Don't get me wrong, I want these creators to earn something for their hard work, and that's why I want to continue talking about games that I genuinely enjoy. Games with passion, that's that's what I like. And that's why I'm even more honored that I got to play this game before release and getting a review copy of it. I'm not like a huge channel or anything either, I'm just some dude who really enjoyed the demo and ended up making a video about it because I wanted other people to know about it. It's just crazy to me. Yes, little old indie games are vastly different in scale and vision compared to AAA games. Like, there's gonna be some experiences that you could only get with AAA games. 
games. You're not gonna have a professional esports community from indie games. You're not gonna have a multi-million online user player base from indie games. And you're not gonna get a GTA-like open world experience from indie games or incredible AAA polish. But then why do I enjoy indie games 99% more of the time? This is a very biased video if you couldn't tell. And no, I'm not saying indie games are better than AAA games in general because that's simply not true. If I'm being honest, bigger budget often does lead to a better game than like less of a budget. But there are some unique experiences that you can also only get out of indie games. And that's why I like Demon Turf. It's fun and creative. And don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. I died like 10 times trying to beat the stupid boss pig. It, it was pissing me off. But what makes Demon Turf an objectively better game than any other similar AAA game you can get for just a bit more money? Well, first off, the music slaps. The pig boss music goes crazy. Here, just listen for a second. <laughs> Aside from that, the gameplay is really fun, and that is a must for a 3D action platformer, and it does it pretty well. Now, the one thing I love is when games innovate. And if you haven't noticed already, Demon Turf has a very unique art style. It's 2D character based with a fully fledged 3D world. And this is the first time I've seen this in a 3D action platformer. It's so visually interesting and creates such a unique contrast between the world and the characters, but also oddly fits so well. In an ideal world, I really wish games were successful simply because they were good. But that's not really the case with anything. I mean, surely, if that was the case, my channel would have definitely blown up by now. Right? Right, guys? guys? Not only that, but not every game is everyone's cup of tea. Everybody has different interests, so I may like something different than you, but my opinion is still objectively better. Hey, aren't you a Beastars fan? Guys, I swear I watch it for the plot. And a lot of people don't like indie games in general, and that's okay. But I will continue to think I'm superior than them. Indie games just feel more personal, which is kind of a reason I typically like them more. It feels like I'm a part of something that's unique and underground. And I have such respect for people who, despite all challenges, achieve something awesome from the ground up. When someone has a vision that they are passionate about, you can tell it's there. This was Demon Turf three years ago when Fabros first started the development of the game. And this is it three years later. That's crazy, dude. It's ironic. Some of the best games in recent years, and actually of all time, have come from independent developers just creating something they're passionate about. Those kinds of people are the people who inspire me to create. And as long as there are those kind of people creating awesome stuff, I will be one of them, regardless of if I'm famous or not. But god, please let me get famous. I've been eating spaghetti and ramen for the past month.